thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I thought it would be important for me to, first of all, say why, how this all came about, why I'm doing this. Um, when, when the invasion took place, um, I thought, wow, you know, I actually know somebody who's in Ukraine, and that's Vasil. Uh, Vasil is a former student of mine. We've got dojos in, on the East Coast and the West Coast of the US. And uh, Vasil left the US, went back to Ukraine uh, just before COVID lockdowns. And, um, and so anyway, I thought, wow, oh my gosh, how is Vasil? And finally, I was able to get in touch with Vasil and just the stories that he was telling me and the fact that I actually knew somebody there uh, was so moving to me and uh, so touching and so moving. And I thought, you know, maybe I can bring that, his story and other stories to people. And um, maybe there's some way that we can help such as donations. Um, that, um, brings me to my next point. Uh, there are two ways to donate today. If you haven't yet, or you would like to do more, um, the, uh, the registration page then takes you to a thank you page. In fact, Ben or Chris, if you could send the registration page with dash thank dash you. Um, and I wanna explain one of the ways to donate. It might be a little confusing. So the one way is of course, just donate. There's another way. I have online courses, and one of them is a monthly membership. It's a recurring payment thing, and uh, I usually keep the doors closed for that, except for a few times per year, but I'm opening it today until midnight for this event specifically, and anyone who joins that, today's payment, I will personally donate 100% of today's payment um, along with any other regular donations that come in. And that monthly membership is one live class per month, broadcast on Zoom from my dojo and some weekly supplemental tips and videos and things like that. So it's, a, it's an online training course and you can quit anytime. <laughs> if you'd like, oh, I don't like this anymore, you quit, no problem. So anyway, those are the two options that you will see when you go to that donation page, uh, if you haven't yet donated or you donate but li would like to donate more. Um, <clears throat> okay. And um, yeah, there's the link. Then uh, I think that is everything from me for now. And I would like to now allow each of the uh, panelists to introduce themselves. Uh, I, again, the only panelist that I know is Vasil. Uh, the rest are, are new friends for me. Um, what I will say is that I've heard many things about Lydia Sensei, that she is Aikido pioneer in Ukraine. This is my understanding. So I would like to begin with Lydia Sensei, if you're ready. Could you give us an introduction of yourself, please? Who you are, why you're here, what you what your connection is. Hi, yeah, my name is Lydia Volansky. I started Aikido in Montreal in 1972, so I'm kind of the Methuselah of this group. Um, I came to Ukraine the first time in 1991, about a month after the coup uh, that, that collapsed the whole Soviet Union. And uh, I came actually with an Aikido group. That was my introduction to Ukraine. So we taught in Moscow and in Pskov and St. Petersburg and in KU. And I fell in love with KU when I first saw it. I just, I, I thought I might visit for two days and that would be the end of it. In fact, I've been living here for the last 30 years. <laughs> so I taught Aikido here actively from 1992 till almost 2000 and pretty much been retired since then. Um, and so Toto Sensei gave me Yondan in 1994. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Lydia Sensei. Um, <clears throat> Arkady Sensei, I can see. Hi. You. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm started Aikido in uh, 1880. Uh, it's Aikikai. 
four year practice on in Donetsk, it's East uh, Ukraine city. Uh, after uh, two hours and practice with uh, Lydia Sensei, my teacher, uh, she's recommendation me uh, 1996 year go to Chicago Aikikai practice uh, with uh, Kevin Chout, uh, Aikikai Dojo, uh, Mitsuhi Saotami Organization, School of Uishiba. In, uh, in Chicago, I have two, two months practice uh, Yoshin Khan and uh, style par together Aikikai, one dojo, three days on week, three days another day in another dojo in Yoshin Khan. And come back uh, 1887 year, come back to Donetsk. I'm start, uh, I'm finished practice IKK, I'm start Yoshin Khan. And uh, now I have good done Yoshin Khan and uh, show done IKK. Uh, nice. I'm uh, every year now go to. Saotami Aikido School of Uishiba uh, and practice uh, in uh, winter Gashuku, nice. Florida. Nice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Akatsu. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next, can I ask uh, Yuri Sensei to introduce yourself, please? And uh, maybe he'll be introducing himself, or maybe his brother Igor will be introducing him. Ben, can you unmute them, ask, send them an invite? Okay. Also, sorry, let me interrupt. We've got one person whose name, whose Zoom name is Sandal. Is this Andre? Uh, Andre, send us a message. If you are on this chat, we weren't finding you with the, the Zoom name. All right, but uh, we are ready for um, Beauty Sensei. Uh, excuse me, I will ask Yuri to introduce himself. Yes. He, he is ready? Yes. Okay, I'm very ready. good. <laughs> yes. uh, I started Aikido uh, 1995 <clears throat> with my first uh, uh, sensei uh, who live in Ushgorod. <clears throat> uh, then uh, I meet uh, uh, Stefan Benedetti student of uh, Tamura Sensei. <clears throat> uh, I met Stefan Benedetti about uh, 1999. Also, I met uh, in, the, uh, in Budapest in the seminar uh, with uh, Tamura Sensei. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, I go uh, with my colleagues uh, uh, man, many seminars uh, in Europe, in uh, Ukraine with uh, Stefan Benedetti, also with uh, <clears throat> uh, Tamura Sensei. Uh, also, I, I will uh, in a seminar uh, Kevin Chouat and uh, meet with uh, Craig Rice. Hello, Craig. <laughs> uh, uh, and now I have uh, Godan. Also, I practice uh, Iaido, Rushin, and Jodo with Dominic Pierre, <clears throat> also with uh, Patrick Ortz. Uh, so I think, I think I, I all uh, information about me. Nice. No Thank short, you. Short, <laughs> short one. <laughs> no, no problem. Welcome. Okay. And, um, do we have Andre Sensei now? Have we found Andre Sensei? Is that this person named Sandal? Could somebody unmute him? Andre Sensei, can you hear us? Здравствуйте. Hello. Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Андрей Саматохин. My name is Andrei Samatokhin. Я сидаин клуба Айкидо Мичи Доджо. I am the Shidoin of the Aikido club Michi Dojo. The fifth ten Aikido Aikikai. Наш клуб является членом организации Aikido Shimbokukai. Our club is the member of Aikido Shimbokukai organization. 
который возглавляет Лиса Тамалеони Сенсей. Which is headed by Lisa Tamalioni Sensei. Я украинец. I am Ukrainian. Живу и тренируюсь в Киеве. I live and train in Kiev. Айкидо начал заниматься в 1990 году. I've been practicing Aikido since 1990. И моим первым учителем высокого ранга была Лидия Валянская. And Lydia Valenska, my, the first teacher, first teacher. И благодаря ей я попал в Вашингтон и учился у Саотома Сенсея. Because of her I studied in Saotoma Sensei. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. And uh, finally, in a sense, the person who started this whole thing, because this is, I started it, but I was tracking down Vasil. And Vasil's story moved me so much. So uh, if you could, Vasil, just an introduction about yourself, please. Oh, that's the hardest thing to, <laughs> to do. <laughs> I don't think talk about myself. So I, I started, uh, practicing Aikido in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, then I was briefly uh, for a few years at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Uh, then, uh, then I came back to Madison, Wisconsin and uh, practiced. We were not associated with uh, Chiba Sensei, but uh, I went there three, four times to San Diego hmm. to take up a beating a little bit there. <laughs> Uh, they're pretty strong guys. And then uh, after uh, I probably started practicing again in Pennsylvania, and that was in, uh, I'd probably say 2019, I think for a year and a half. I could be wrong a little bit. I think you're right. I wanted to do it earlier, but but my uh, schedule did not allow me to yeah. to do that. And then after after some time I said, you know, it's going to be scheduled that will allow me to practice Aikido. I will, I will not work there. So <laughs> they, they, they finally moved me to a different schedule that will allow, allow me to practice. Thank you, Sansa. Thank you. Right. Okay. Check my notes now. So those are uh, all the introductions then. Let's move to the first question. Um, I thought it would be very valuable for people to hear how the war has impacted uh, our panelists personally, how it has impacted their dojos. So we're going to start with um, personally. So going back to Lydia Sensei, please. I'd like to ask you uh, to share. We've got, I'm sure that all of our panelists could go on and on and on for, for hours probably telling us how the war has impacted them. But since we wanna keep everybody in the meeting and, and focused, um, we're holding it to, we're gonna to try to hold the meeting to one hour. So we're gonna limit our panelists to about two minutes for your answers, okay? Um, <clears throat> so Lydia Sensei, can you share with us some ways that the war has impacted you personally? Uh, yeah, I woke up uh, six o'clock in the morning on February 24th. A friend of mine called from cave to tell me that they started bombing. Oh. So I was pretty strange and pretty scary. Um, they did attack the airport about 60 kilometers away from us, and we could hear that. But basically, uh, where I live in the Carpathian Mountains, we haven't been under physical direct threat uh, so far. The closest attack has been maybe five kilometers away. So I started basically opening my house to IDPs and refugees. And the first few people that came through continued on to like Romania and other places. Some people went to Latvia, some people went to Romania. Um, and other people stayed, uh, the cave people left in mid-May, April, rather went back to cave because they felt it was safe enough. And I have a family from Kharkiv that is still living in my guest house. So they've been there for four months at this point. So that's been, that's been the major impact of the war for me. And of course, occasional gas rationing and stuff like that. But um, it's nerve wracking, but you know, my, my situation is safe and I don't have a dojo, so it's not affecting my dojo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Lydia Sensei. And uh, Arkady, can we Hi. ask how it, has how it has impacted you personally? 
Personally, it's war start eight years ago, uh, 2014, in east uh, in eastern Ukraine, uh, Crimea region and Donetsk Lugansk region, and now it's uh, this February start uh, second level uh, escalation this war and. Uh, but uh, it's only second level. I know uh, three level, four level. Uh, I think it's uh, not short war. I think it's long. But uh, I'm sh being in shock at uh, first, uh, first three, four days uh, in February. I don't wo want to uh, attack to capital to Ukraine, Kiev. I am. Um, I don't believe this, uh, but it's uh, it's for me will being in shock. Uh, after a little bit adaptation and um, every day get used use it to slowly slowly no problem. Now now in Kiev uh, normally normally no, no, normally life uh, not so much problem. Sometimes uh, being attacked, but uh, not uh, not hard. In uh, East Ukraine now so much. East East and the South Ukraine now so much attack. Yeah, I'm I think uh, good idea for your organization this meeting and uh, maybe next time you uh, in, invite to. Uh, uh, I keep the instructor in east and south city. Yeah. It's very uh, now. It's very hard uh, time for this uh, region. Yeah. Um, west and, and then the Kiev, no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Arkady Sensei. Um, by the way, everybody, uh, Arkady Sensei mentioned that maybe next time we can do another event inviting instructors from the East and the South, the, the areas that are more hard hit. Um, Craig Sensei in Santa Barbara was kind enough to introduce me to a lot of people. Yuri Sensei also introduced me to a lot of people, but many of them I did not hear back from. So we ended up with, a, with this panel and uh, I, I have no idea, but I suspect that some of the people I did not hear back from is because they're in a very hard hit area. Maybe they didn't have internet. I don't really know. So I like your idea, Arkady Sensei. Um, and I'm absolutely interested in doing that if it's possible. So thank you very much. I think it's, it's possible. Okay. So we already, I already have homework. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yuri Sensei, can you tell us uh, how the war has impacted you personally? Are you guys sending there? Uh, I live in Ushgorod. This is the westernmost part of Ukraine. This is the safest part so far. Uh, from the first day of the Russian invasion, I became an uh, active volunteer for the first three months. Every day we send several wagons of humanitarian aid, including full military. <clears throat> Trains to Kiev, Odessa, Dnipro, Kharkiv. I freed the dojo for women with children from uh, the eastern region. Uh, and now my dojo is uh, returned to regular Aikido practice. Uh, I must say about my friends who are with uh, us here now. See a dojo where is uh, Kramatorsk, my friend, <clears throat> Mariupol Bakhmut, uh, who uh, survived uh, the horror of war like no other of us. Uh, many of them, of course, uh, were left without a dojo and were forced to live with their family for other cities. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, that this time is not an uh, opportunity to at least uh, briefly hear them. Uh, hear how uh, the war affected their dojo and uh, their lives but we hope uh, that next time we can uh, hear them. 
Mm. Also, I am very grateful uh, to Leah for organizing this meeting and uh, grateful to everyone who supports Ukraine in, in any way. Thanks very much. And uh, I am wanted to say that's all. Please, next. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri Sensei. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Uh, Andre Sensei, can you share with us how the war has changed, uh, impacted you personally? War is an unbearable grief and great challenge. Она начинается внезапно, даже если понимаешь, что она неотвратима. It starts unexpectedly, even if you understand its inevitability. Жизнь сразу рассказывается на до и на после. Life is split up into before and after. Это огромный стресс даже для военного и тренированного человека. War is a huge stress even for a trained military. Я не исключение. I am not an exception one. Мир становится лично для меня стал черно-белым без полутонов. The world itself became black and white with no shades. Он делится, делится на два лагеря, свои и чужие. And is divided into friends and foes. Своим я как могу помогаю, поддерживаю. Friends, I help and support my friends by all means. И испытываю чувство гордости за Украину и украинцев. Being proud of Ukraine and Ukrainians. Ну, нас нельзя сломать. No one can tear us apart. А к чужим внутри холодная ненависть и отсутствие жалости, любовь. Speaking about foes, well, for foes, total rejection of everything. И сейчас, именно сейчас, полное отторжение всего, что связано с Россией. And speaking about now, it's the total rejection of everything which is slightly connected with Russia. Культура, ценности, история. Culture, values, language, history. Люди, вернее, не люди. People, or as we call them, orcs. И нет в мире такого преступления, которое на сегодняшний день не, не совершили русские агрессоры и оккупанты в Украине. There is no such crime in the world which Russian aggressors and occupants haven't done in Ukraine. Но, как говорится, Бог все видит. Well, God sees everything and everyone. And they will pay for everything. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Andre Sensei. Okay. He was finished, yes? So yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vasil Sensei. Vasil is my student. I don't know if he has a dojo, but I'll call you Vasil Sensei. I would agree that war war is, is difficult. Well, everything just this stopped. If everything stopped, um, even if you not try to be get involved, uh, you know, you, you get involved in one way or another. Like an example, uh, my cousin is an 80th brigade. So he got, uh, he was assigned to a javelin missile, but <laughs> somehow he didn't get trained. So we trained him two days ago, and this is the result. 12 tanks were done, they burned 12 tanks, it's 80th Brigade, two were taken, a 72nd and 80th, 80 and 72nd, that's the type of tanks that they captured from the, from the Russians. So uh, it looks like everybody's involved, uh, everybody's doing their best, and I hope it will be a big change by the end of the summer. Yeah. But everybody's hoping that this will end hopefully by the end of this year. Yeah. And that's, that's the hope. Yeah. Also, a lot of losses on our side. The Russians actually don't count people, but so we do. Big losses on our side. And I say the sooner the better. So we should get it. This war has to be won before the end of the year. So everybody hopes. And as long as the West continues to send the support that Ukraine needs. That's that's everybody's hope. The war starts and ends at some point. So we hope for the for the sooner ending of it. Yeah. And as as I said, as far as the 
dojos. We did not, I do not have a dojo yet. I was hoping to leave or cave, but uh, war has stopped everything. That's, that's the, right now that's I'm pretty much on, on the phone call, whatever they call, I just need to kind of get things done. Okay. Or trainings, um, javelin or maybe kind of do stuff, whatever they get, you know, because things get to the front, they not necessarily all people know how to use it, but we manage, that's okay. Um, so hopefully again, hopefully it will end. Yeah. That's everybody hopes that, so. All Thank right. You. Thank you, Vasa. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know whether everybody could hear okay, but Vasil was talking about his cousin who is fighting. And that's the story that really moved me, um, which if we have time later on, maybe, but the, the short version is his cousin driving in the pitch black with no lights and the truck getting demolished. And uh, thankfully he was alive. Anyway, uh, let's continue the questions. Uh, how has the dojo, Im I'm sorry, how has the war impacted your dojo? Um, Lydia, since you're on the top of my list, but you don't have a dojo, I think. Um, shall I just skip to our I body sensei? I, to make one. I couldn't understand that. I wanted to make one remark though, yeah, even though I don't have, it's, it, I have a very brief, Hard to me, yeah. Um, one of my former students was Yulia Payevska, who had the uh, call, call name Tyra, and she was actually kidnapped by the Russians in mid-March and released not that long ago. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, she was a medic, and she's been working at the front for years, basically since about 2015 when the war originally started. Uh, so, you know, it was a pretty horrifying situation. I have no idea what state she's in now, what was done to her, but, um, you know, it's kind of hard. She was a student of mine in the mid-90s, so I remember her quite well. I even have a little ceramic out set of tea dishes from her so that she made by hand. So... I don't have a dojo, but my students. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that I didn't just skip over you. Wow. Okay. Um, Arkady Sensei, how has the dojo, how has the war impacted your dojo? Oh, in February and March, uh, in uh, we we we've been closed. March, April, May, we closed. Uh, now summertime uh, is uh, for me. It's normally no, don't train in uh, Aikido. Every summer we have Gashuku camp for Aikido, and this year and uh, two years ago it's pandemic. Same uh, we have problem every summer. Don't don't training, but uh, I'm thinking September. Yeah, I'm open dojo and start practice. I'm think no problem. Is situation possible? Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we have a training, but uh, I don't know what be in, in yeah. September. I, I want good time for start training. Mm -hmm. Got it. Well, All thank right. You. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> Yuri Sensei, how has uh, the war impacted your dojo? <clears throat> yes. Uh, as I say, uh, my city uh, is the westernmost part of Ukraine and the uh, safest part uh, now. Uh, my dojo uh, <clears throat> from uh, first day, uh, well, uh, as, as uh, uh, I, I freed uh, the dojo for women with children from the can, eastern can I, regions. Can I interrupt yeah. you, Yuri Sensei? Sorry, I didn't understand. You you have uh, what, the dojo? You opened for women and children or? Uh, no, no. in my dojo I live a woman with children. As a home. Oh, living. Oh my God. Yes, yes. living. Living, yes. Ma many Thank people, you. many people. All, all dojo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, about uh, three, three months or four months. Yes, uh, may, maybe one month uh, I, I have uh, uh, now uh, Aikido practice. Wow. And uh, that's all. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
<clears throat> Andre Sensei, how has the war impacted your dojo and your dojo members? Can we find Andre Sensei? Слышно? Got it. Занятия в доджо пришлось остановить. We had to stop trainings because it was too dangerous. Три месяца мы не работали. We haven't worked for three months. И было слишком опасно, я не хотел подвергать опасность, опасности жизни, здоровья других людей. It was really dangerous and I didn't want to put people's life and health in danger. Но Мичи Доджо не остался в стороне. But Michi Dojo didn't step aside. Мы как могли помогали беженцам, волонтерам и врачам. By all means, we helped refugees, volunteers and doctors. И также как у Юрия в нашем доджо жили врачи, беженцы, дети. We've got the same situation as Yuri. Our dojo was a room for living refugees, kids, women and others. Из-за расположения зала он у нас находится в полуподвале. Because of the dojo's location, it's semi-basement. В нем сравнительно безопаснее, чем в других помещениях, пережидать ракетные обстрелы. It was comparably safer than in other premises to wait until rocket bombardment will stop. Сейчас наш доджи возобновил работу. Today our доджи has reopened. Но на занятия приходит одна третья часть от довоенной численности. Only one third of pre-war community is practicing now, but I'm glad of that too. Но я этому рад. Люди устали жить в страхе и в постоянном напряжении. People are tired living in fear and constant tension. И занятия в Додзе для них это возможность отвлечься, вспомнить прежнюю жизнь. Aikido practicing in Dojo is a great possibility for them to remember pre-war life and to take their mind of war. Много человек, многие уехали из, Ки из Киева, но многие остались. Some people left Kiev and Ukraine, but the majority stayed. Ну как это не горько сознавать, но война объединила нас и проявила в каждом хорошие и плохие черты. No matter how bitter it is to realize, but the war teamed us up and showed good and bad traits in everyone. К сожалению, у нас были и те, кто поддержал агрессора. Unfortunately, we even had those who supported aggressor. С ними мы без сожаления расстались. With no regrets, have parted with them. Я горд, что почти сто процентов тех, кто занимается в Мичи, оказались настоящими патриотами. I'm proud that almost one hundred percent of the members of Michi Dojo are real patriots, and no one step aside. И сейчас те, кто занимается в Доджи, часть из них на фронте, кто-то стал волонтером, и каждый делает то, что может для победы. Some are on the front line, while others are volunteers. Everyone do whatever it takes for our victory. That's it. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Vasil San, would you like to, uh, I know you don't have a dojo, would you like to respond to this question or shall I skip to the next question? Okay, let's, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, okay. Vasil has yet to start his dojo. So um, <clears throat> the next question uh, I'm very interested in, I'm interested in them all, but anyway, um, the next question, uh, how has the war impacted your view of Aikido? And sorry, let me get the whole thing. And its importance in your life and the lives of your dojo members. So again, how has the war impacted your view of Aikido and its importance in your life and the lives of your dojo members? So let's go back to Lydia Sensei, please. Hi. Um, I've always found the, the principles of Aikido rather important in my own life and the idea of being harmonious and finding ways to resolution. Uh, unfortunately, this war has shown us that the uh, peaceful resolution is not possible with all people, especially if you're dealing with a lawless, aggressive uh, people who are basically determined to kill you. Sometimes you just have to shoot them and that's it. Thanks. Sorry. No. Shall I 
go to the next person. You seem like you're finished, but that was pretty heavy duty. I can go. <laughs> was yeah, that's a very <laughs> intelligent and uh, I can go to the next panelist or I don't want to cut you off. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Powerful. Uh, Arkady Sensei. Hi. <clears throat> oh. My student and instructors uh, uh, go in uh, st after start of uh, this war, and in, I'm thinking much uh, in in March uh, go to West Ukraine and and Poland. Some people now stay uh, in women and children and go living in Poland. Uh, some people now come back. Uh, but uh, I'm staying in, in Kiev, I don't feel in a uh, dangerous situation. But uh, for children, uh, for women, it's very dangerous and very good, I think, go uh, safe safe place uh, in, in West uh, Ukraine and uh, another European, Canada, USA, why, why not? But uh, I'm think uh, so many people come back, and uh, I'm think <laughs> another people don't come back. But uh, it's uh, life. Uh, it's uh, people must be think what he, what he do it uh, for children. What future for children? Uh, every time live uh, in way in in for children wait uh, attack. Uh, for Russia, it's not normally. Adults, no problem. For children, it's not uh, no good for psychic, for uh, uh, for mind. Yes. Yeah. And now, now I'm thinking in uh, September, be an okay situation. We start uh, and uh, coming new students, and uh, it's help for body and help for mind. Practice Aikido. Yes. It's uh, different uh, practice. Uh, people go in dojo training and change and clean, clean body and clean mind. Yes. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much, uh, Arkady Sensei. Uh, Yuri Sensei, how has the war impacted your view of Aikido and its value? My brother uh, helped me with translate, please because uh, i will try uh, yes знаете когда война и когда надо думать и спасать чьи-то жизни потому что кто-то просит что-то надо ему помочь достать и привести и чтобы человек это получил и либо это war is changing our life completely all the tasks are uh, differ much. Uh, during the normal uh, life, we live with our idea, with our thoughts, but when war coming, the other very necessary task appears. То есть, поскольку доджо занято было людьми, которые там спали, то, соответственно, тренировки проводить нельзя, но волонтерством приходится пришлось заниматься с утра до вечера помогать нуждающимся в основном мы мы на на военных было скажем так направление the situation forced the the dojo was uh, was given to the people who needs for living and the most activity was done to uh, to help our military, our soldiers to to support them with uh, their needs. Но, конечно, как только доджо открыли, все уже давно просили и много переселенцев приехало, тоже звонили, хотели, чтобы дети чем-то занимались. То как только возможность появилась, я начал тренировки, ну и также параллельно. Тут, тут, тут у нас в нашем городе все, все, все волонтеры, так что тут не, нельзя было чем-то другим заниматься. 
And as Arkadi said previously, Aikido practice is very good uh, medicine to clean up the mind and to clean, uh, and to refresh the physical body from the horrible thoughts from the from everything bad. Aikido helps to to stay uh, with uh, good mind. Mm -hmm. Могу много говорить, но буду экономить время всех, так что спасибо за внимание. Uh, a lot I wanted to say a lot, but let's let's say the, the, the uh, feeling. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yuri Sensei, thank and thank you, you Igor San for helping. Um, next, uh, Andre Sensei, please. How has, I'll repeat the question again too. Uh, how has the war impacted your view of Aikido and its importance in your life and the lives of your students? Это не простой вопрос. Not a simple question it is. К Айкидо у меня отношение не изменилось. My attitude towards Aikido didn't change. Скорее наоборот. Well, vice versa. Война лишний раз доказывает важность и необходимость такого искусства в жизни людей. The war proves once again the importance and necessity of such martial art in people's lives. Она ясно показывает, к чему приводит агрессия, если ее не остановить. It shows clearly to what anger and aggression could lead. Но что-то не срабатывает должным образом. But something didn't work in a proper way. Я сейчас говорю из собственного опыта. Today I'm speaking only about myself. Айкидоки в основном за пределами Украины разделились на три лагеря. Айкидо practitioners divided mainly into three groups. Первый их большинство. The first one, the majority. Как настоящие воины света активно выступают против агрессии России. As true warriors of light actively oppose Russian aggression. Стараются помочь нам всем, чем могут, не бояться открыто говорить об этом. И имеют смелость назвать Россию агрессором и оккупантом. Try to help us with everything they can and not being afraid of speaking freely about Russian aggression, calling Russia aggressor and occupant. Вторые их меньшинство. The second group, the minority. В основном это россияне. Mostly Russians. Они активно поддерживают войну против Украины. They actively support war against Ukraine. Иногда громко и цинично заявляю, что такого государства Украины не существует, а украинцы это люди второго сорта. Claiming loudly and cynically that Ukraine as a state does not exist and Ukrainians are a second class people. Например, среди этих людей Николай Егоров. For example, among these people are Николай Егоров. Президент Федерации Айкидо России, шестой дан. The president of the Aikido Federation of Russia, the sixth dan. Я его хорошо знаю лично. I know him personally very well. Да и многие из тех, кто сейчас э, здесь на интервью знают его тоже. As well as the presenters. Второй, например, Сергей Кириенко. The second one, uh, like an example, is Сергей Кириенко. Президент Национального совета Айкидо России, пятый дан. The president of the National Aikido Council of Russia, the fifth dan. К сожалению... Я говорю про свое мнение. Реакция Хумбудоджи на это более чем сдержана и толерантна. Unfortunately, the Humbudoji reaction is more than tolerant and restrained. У меня лично это вызывает недоумение и досаду. Personally, I find it perplexing and frustrated. А третья группа молчит и делает вид, что ничего страшного не происходит. And the third group is keeping silence and pretending that it's nothing. Это не локальный конфликт. It is not a local conflict. Это борьба между старым и новым миром. It's a real war, a real fight between an old, outmoded world with new, emerging one. Сегодня уже весь мир знает, что такое Украина, и большая часть мира поддерживает нас. Today the whole world knows what is Ukraine, and most of the world supports us. А вот именно с молчаливого согласия таких третьих и происходят все войны. Exactly because of the silent assent of the thirds, all war is secure in the world. Thank you. Thank you.
you very <clears throat> thank you very much, Andrew Sensei. Well, um, Basil, please. How has the war impacted your view of Aikido and its importance in your life and the life of students? If you have any. Uh, thank you. It's, uh, I usually contain it to myself. And, uh, it's hard to talk, really hard to talk. Yeah. But to try to put it in a few minutes. When the war started, I was trained. You know what? The whole, everybody in the military, I was told we were we are to teach you how to kill professionally. That was I was told that in Fort Knox, Kentucky. So they did fulfill the promise. They they taught how to kill. Uh, I was well trained. So it, it took me a while to to put this demon in a containment box. So during the first two weeks, the rage was, I was enraged. Everything I was thinking is just to kill as many uh, innovators as, as, I, as I could. That's, and a lot of hatred and rage, a lot of it. So I felt like the demon is getting out. That's, that's urge to kill. Just, I, I couldn't control it. Wow. That, it was kind of eating me from within. And at one point I said, you know, listen, you know, I cannot just do nothing. I said, I, I would support uh, Lydia Sensei in that. Again, she said, at some point, you know, when they come to kill you, so it's just you kind of let them kill you or, or just, or just, you just defend yourself. So you've seen everything that happened in, in like in Bucha, Irpin, uh, that's by Kiev, the suburbs of Kiev. Uh, women were raped, killed. Children, children were raped and killed. Uh, so this is just try to absorb it. So it's hard to, you know, it's maybe in a different country, you just don't kind of just don't feel it. But uh, think of it. So it, it's uh, they declared a genocide in Russia. They declared on a state on a state level. So they say this nation doesn't exist. They want to resurrect the Soviet Union to 2.0 or, or the Russian Empire, the Federation, whatever you call it. Remember that Simpsons uh, cartoon when the, the Russia just changes the, the, on, the, on, the, on the table, there's a change of, uh, and in the UN beating, that's a Simpson uh, cartoon. And so when there's Russia, and it turns into the Soviet Union. And it's like, so they were right about this in 1997. So basically, that's that thing, the Soviet Union fell apart. But, but the whole country, it just, it, again, this thing remained. So the KGB, like freak, uh, it's, he's in charge. Uh, so and, and nuc and nuclear weapons altogether, just again, they just decided just they would just, we would dictate, we will have uh, that the Soviet Union in, the, in a, more or less the same borders. So and it's just, it's, it's pretty clear. So uh, they, they just won that. So, as far as how it's affected, again, it took me some, some, great effort to put my my own demon back into the box because the, literally you can you can kill but but you know it's if you're doing from rage or hatred it will consume it will consume you from within so it took me a great effort to put it down it just clicks i don't know i'm not sure but again just one once you're trained it just uh, it's 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 hard to contain for me so they did their job well in Fort Knox. Again, it's very hard to contain. It, it took me literally like two, three weeks just to kind of, just to be able to control myself and not just to kind of, uh, just to, just let it go. Let go, I mean, just go there and just, you know, is that kill as many, but but again, it's it's hard just to kill just out of hatred. If you want to do it, just just do it without hatred. If it's doable, because again, if once you once you start doing it and and do it from hatred, it will, it will just be just you might never come back from this. So that was a practical application of aikido in a real life. Uh, I still train people. Uh, I sometimes hesitate whether to do that. I do hesitate. Uh, but people count on me, so I didn't, I cannot let them down. My cousin says, you know, I have this, again, this javelin. I said, the javelin is ready, operator is not. I said, <laughs> I said, brother, через две години будем говорить. We'll talk in two hours. I need to get ready. 
that's a 264 pages, but, but things need to get done. Again, uh, I sometimes do hesitate whether to do it because basically it's just training people how to kill. I, I do not know. But on the other hand, you cannot let those people be killed because the Russians will plow through and they would kill as many. It's, it's just, I, I agree with Lydia, Lydia Sensei. If, if, if Ukrainians don't resist, there will be no Ukrainians. That's clear, that's clear. At least those like 10% or 20% that would resist, if, if they kill those, obviously they would be able to control the 80% because those people, not, not everybody's willing, willing or able to fight. That's about 10 to 20% of the population. So, and yet again, uh, that's about probably the percentage of active people. Like you can call them warriors, not warriors, but that's, that's basically the percentage. So I say there is a certain obligation. Sometimes I have doubts, but I still think that people, people have the right to resist. It's a call that is here, a just war, I guess. I don't know how oh, yeah, we call it. Um, that's how it affected. And that's how Aikido, in, in my opinion, played because Aikido is a, a non-violent martial art, um, a mix with, with uh, killing um, skills. I was, I was unfortunately in the elite and they did their job well. But again, it, it's just, you have to be able to go to, to contain that, that, that skill and not just to kill from, from hatred. That's, that's the major thing for me. Because at, at some point I had to get hold and, and, and just control that that rage, and the rage was huge. Wow. Wow. It was just consuming me, just just yeah. over my head. Uh, wow, um, that's uh, when when you see <clears throat> it's hard to talk about it very in a broad term, but if you think about uh, one particular family, when you just kind of like listen to what uh, I was listening to some woman uh, and by, by the grave of her daughter and her grandchildren. Mm. And she was, she was saying, I will never see you again. So it's hard to know, but you know, you can say like uh, tens of thousands of people like were killed in Mariupol. That's, 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 that's unbearable. Tens of thousands of people are just, you know, shelled, surrounded, and basically shelled. That's a lot of people. But to understand it better, you have to take one family and just be part of it. Yeah. And and then multiply it by by tens of thousands of people of innocent people killed. Yeah. For for no reason. Yeah. So and that's that's basically. I can talk a lot about it, but probably I, I'd rather stop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. It's not easy yeah. to talk about. Of course. Yeah. I do not know those people, but those people are somebody's, you know, mothers, yeah. grandmothers, children. And children is my, this is the best. Yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you so much. Children are definitely innocent. So well, why would you do that? You know, why would you kill children? Right. Because this is... This is what the whole world needs to know. That's why it has to end as soon as possible with as few casualties as possible. It has to stop. Obviously, the, the, only, the only way to stop it is to, to throw them out and just to just get do it with weapons, so be it. But it cannot last for a long time. This is just, yeah, uh, I say it has to end, but so if it takes more weapons and stuff, so be it. Yeah. Or they can stop at any time right now. Just stop it. Don't do it. Just yeah. withdraw. Just nobody wants to humiliate uh, Putin. Mm. Nobody's just leave. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. Just leave. It's not your land. Yeah. People don't want to live in the Soviet Union. Yeah. Okay. Just just go. Yeah. Because the I believe the Ukrainian will win. Uh, it's not a just war in, in my eyes for the Russians. That's not a just war. They have nothing here that, they, that is theirs, nothing. Yeah. Okay, so I'd say if I had to, talk, to tell them just to stop it, just leave. Yeah. Uh, it will end in, in, in our victory, but, but again, 
yeah. I hope at, at, a, at a lower cost. Thank you so much, Vasil. Thank you. Uh, I want to go to the final question, if, if that's okay. Yeah, I think this, I don't know about everybody else, but for me, this was very, very powerful listening to uh, your experiences. And uh, thank you for uh, sharing some very personal feelings and things. Um, Chris and Ben, I'm, I'm, am I on the spotlight again too? I just wanna make sure that people can hear me and see me, so, okay. Sorry, I'm like really kind of, my mind was blown from, from everything that Vasil said. Um, our final question, and I wanna make this one shorter. And I think that this question maybe could be the longest answer, but I wanna try to keep the answers short so that we can wrap up. Uh, please keep in mind that I am very open to doing another event because I think we're only scratching the surface today. Um, <clears throat> but with a very short answer, um, sorry, before I ask the question, most of you uh, already donated before the meeting. Thank you so much. Uh, the last I checked, we had raised something like $250 or $300. Um, it's not a crazy amount of money, but um, I think every bit helps. Uh, so just a reminder, if you haven't yet donated, uh, please do so. If somebody could send that link again, that would be fantastic. Thank you, whoever just did that. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so there are so, so many ways, uh, so many, so many needs, I believe. And so for today, uh, I did a, as much research as I could. I've narrowed it down to three charities, um, Star Life and uh, Aikido for Ukraine and IP Extensions. So these are the ones that I have uh, um, targeted for today's event. Um, <clears throat> but I want to give each panelist a chance to say how we can help, you know, is it, you know, we can donate money or send something or do more events like this or uh, just a, your quickest answer, 20 or 30 seconds. Um, how, how can we help? What's the best way to help? Uh, Lydia Sensei, can I have you go first? Is your Zoom frozen? Oh, her Zoom might be frozen or I am. Nope, I'm okay, I think. Let's jump over to Arkadi. Sensei, right. um, what is the best way for people to help? Is it cash donations or something different or what? Lia uh, Sensei, for me, thank you for, for much. I'm fine. I'm no, no problem. Uh, I'm Ukraine, a think, how, how can we help Ukraine? Yeah. Yeah, I'm think uh, so many people in West, in East Ukraine and South Ukraine have uh, helped. And uh, I think maybe Yuri better uh, help, help organize uh, these people. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Yuri Sensei, what is the best way that we can help? Uh, we can, we need help, my brother, Igor. Yes, I am here. Yes. Uh, also, з нами разом тут на зумі знаходяться наші українські колеги, які це Олег Вочель, який представляє Краматорськ. Це here are in our conversation Олег Вочек, which is representing Краматорськ. Також тут Марина Волчкова з Маріуполя. Марина Волчкова з Маріуполя. Віктор Шматко, якщо не помиляюсь, з Бахмута. Віктор Шматко, if I not mistaken, from Бахмут. Ну, відповідно, я в Ужгороді, як мій колега сказав, також погоджуюся, що в Ужгороді все спокійно. Тобто вся увага, на мій погляд, потребує 
до людей, які втратили свої доджо, які, можливо, і не тільки доджо, можливо, і житло втратили на прикладі Маріуполя. Юрій з Інужгород з найбільш peaceful place in, in Ukraine now, but people from east part uh, needs uh, little and uh, big and quick help. Thank you. All right. Uh, Andre Sensei, what is the best way that we can help you? Thanks pray? very much. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri Sensei. No, для мене лично нічого, ви вже допомагаєте. Well, personally, not for me. You are helping already. А для українців, во-первых, морально. For Ukrainians, well, first of all, with their moral support. Открыто заявляє свої підтримки. Claiming freely about their support will help us as well. Поверьте, це дійсно дуже допомагає. Trust me, it, it helps. Во-вторых, матеріально. Secondly, materially. Це те, о чому ми сьогодні говоримо. So we have spoken about today. Нам зараз дуже потрібна допомога, особливо тим, хто знаходиться на фронті. We are in a great need of any kind of help, especially those who are on the front line. Ну, я маю на увазі екіпіровку, медичні препарати і фінанси на їх приобретення. I mean equipment, medical supplies, finances to purchase them. У кожного з нас є пряма зв'язка з тими, хто знаходиться на передовій. Almost every Ukrainian Aikido practitioner here Uh, has a possibility to contact directly volunteers or frontline commanders to hand over the help. Вот. Но я думаю, что э, лучше с этим справиться, справиться и ближе сейчас всего находятся Василий и Юрий. But I truly believe that Василий и Юрий will do their best to help this. А помощь нужна, потому что очень разные ресурсы у России и Украины. Ukraine and Russia has got very different resources, the amount of resources, and the importing is crucial for us. Как сказал один украинец, Россия, российская армия просто очень длинная. As one Ukrainian told me, the Russian army is very long. И нужны средства для того, чтобы ее And we need some supplies. Победить. Я, я пользуюсь случаем, хочу сказать спасибо, благодарю вас, Лея Сузуки Сенсей. Лея Сузуки, я хочу сказать спасибо вам лично. И вашу организацию Aikido Kinkyuka International. И также вашу организацию Aikido Kinkyuka International. А также Крейг Райса за помощью в организации этого интервью. Также я хочу сказать спасибо Крейг Райс за организацию этого интервью и помощь. И буквально пару слов. And if you permit, couple words more. Я очень благодарен Лисе Тамалеоне Сенсею. I'm thankful to Lisa Tamalioni Sensei. И Хироси Икеда Сенсей. And Hiroshi Ikeda Sensei. Aikido Shimbukukai. And the whole Aikido Shimbukukai organization. За их поддержку. For their help and support. Спасибо, thank you. Thank you very much. It is really important for us. Thank you very much, Andre Sensei. <coughs> Uh, do we have Lydia Sensei back again? Lydia Sensei, you were frozen before. I think she might have uh, disconnected. Okay, okay. You're not seeing her yet, uh, Ben? Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, Vasil San, please. Um, how, actually, before I ask Vasil, um, one of the conversations that we spoke about uh, that Vasil and I had was uh, when his cousin was driving out of an area where he was being attacked on four sides. He was driving at night with the lights off and every time there was an explosion, he would be blinded and then it was even more difficult to see. And he said, we need a monocular. And uh, <clears throat> so these things that I never would have even thought of, and I know there must be an, uh, just such a huge number of needs. But anyway, so Vasil, uh, I'd like to ask you the same question that I asked the other panelists. How can we best help? Thank you, Sensei. I, I actually got, I, I called a few people in the US uh, after that, after I spoke to my cousin. Right. And then I called the sniper school we organized about six years ago. They, they had one left. Uh, we haven't tested it. I sent it to my cousin already. Uh, so he hasn't tested it yet. It's only like second generation uh, monocular. We'll see how it works. Uh -huh. So if that is enough, it's enough. But uh, I'm pretty sure there will be new new needs. Uh, as far as how how people in the U.S. could help, mm -hmm. I'll just express what I think is right. Uh, 
uh, I used to work for Russ Feingold in Wisconsin, a U.S. senator, about three years. So he was in Foreign Relations Committee, I believe, Armed Services Committee, uh, the Judicial Committee, uh, probably, I don't, probably about five, four or five. So I say, you know, since we elect the uh, Congress, so I say, I, I work already with a few senators. Uh, Tevi Baldwin in Wisconsin, uh, Brian Fitzpatrick in Pennsylvania. I spoke to him personally a few times. Uh, Portman, Portman is a good senator. He's Republican from uh, um, Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. I, I used to have a friend working for him, so we met a few times in DC. So I say it, we cannot, as civilians, we cannot supply the, the weapons. Uh, and you cannot just, the Russians just did not stop. So I say uh, faster and more weapons, and because we can just deliver the medical supplies that is that are necessary, but if, if we do not stop it, uh, you know the war stops only with the victory. <laughs> One side or the other wins. That's that's part of war. So it's just war for Ukrainians. The Ukrainians are defending themselves. They, they're not in aggression. Uh, they're, they're not in aggressors. So I say faster and more weapons that were promised. Uh, they are on the right track. I was speaking to Congress about three months ago. I was asking for certain things. They said, you must be kidding me. You know, I, said, I was just, you know, I said, no no way. I said, listen, you'll have to give it to, to Ukrainians. You know, it's, uh, you, you'll have to. I will elect you. I ask you as a constituent. Mm. I said, if you need to build up the support, the support is pretty strong, about 72%. I say is if if American uh, Americans understand it, I say you know just call your congressman, but not just once. Mm. It looks like there is a bipartisan of the support in Congress. Just it's good. The, the White House can slow it down a little bit. Uh, so Blinken is fine. The State Department. So mm. Austin is okay. Milley, General Milley is fine. So this is the fifty states, uh, okay, different countries support support Ukraine. But it, again, we, you just need to speed it up. I think I think things are on the right track. Yeah, uh, wow. Sullivan is is uh, is uh, I don't like Sullivan. Uh, he's just kind of like yellow mellow. Who knows what he needs? But but it just the war will not stop on, yeah. on its own. So I say, call, email, say, hey, did you support? Did you supply what what trade needs? Just constant support until until the the war is won and just then get get off their backs. <laughs> so that's what you can do as, as a constituent. And I say, even it's it just, again, the, the, the Koreans cannot do it with bare hands. And it's just a matter of, uh, as General Clark said, or, or Hodges, Ben Hodges, I think said that, you know, it's about test of logistics and will. So the will the will Ukrainians have possessed, now it's it's a matter of, of supply of logistics, supplies of weapons, proper weapons. And and again, it, the sooner the better. Yes. Because it, it just so many people get killed just for for, for nothing. Or what? Just trying to, to to defend their lives. Mm -hmm. Like there are people like from the uh, and again, just obviously supplying the people from Kremenchuk, uh, for the mm -hmm. Bakhmut, Mariupol has been wiped out mm -hmm. completely, almost completely. So uh, there was no reason to 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 do that Aleppo. Like in Syria, number two. This is crazy. Why would you do that? Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. So because if they say they liberate, let's say that's imagine for a second. We, we are we are liberators. We liberate. Mm. How you, you liberate people from from life? Mm. Mm. Vasil. Like because they, they were just they were liberating. How are you? Yeah. We're gonna liberate you. And they shoot you in the head, and then you're not, now you're liberated. Yeah. You don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. So. Uh, that part, I think this is the most effective because I pay taxes. Yeah. Um, I elect Congress, mm. so they have a certain responsibility. In, in that sense, you know, because as a civilian, again, ask them to do their job. Yeah. That's, that's what governments do. We didn't start that war, so just let, let us finish it. That's the strongest part. And obviously, supplying whatever everybody needs, yeah. <laughs> you pick up. A family or whatever you should, because people have different talents. Yes. Just Thank just you. just choose a place, choose a spot. Yep. Choose your talent. Yeah. 
yeah. and just yeah. do your best. Like I'm, I'm not in the best financial position right now, but I'm doing my best, like say training or calling, which I do nonstop. Every day there's, there's, there hasn't been a day that I hasn't called. Wow. I said, very calmly. So have you supplied, wow. like say, uh, high marks, you know, uh, the one other assets, or have you supplied more of ammunition because it's running out? The 155 caliber is good, but yeah. we still have some 152 caliber. So did you did you supply that? Like uh, it, it, it will not stop by itself. Yeah, it's pretty clear. So we asked to stop the war. They yeah. just don't stop. Thank you so, so much, Vasil. So I, thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I I want to make sure that I give everybody a chance to talk. Yes, so thank that, you. That's it so, in a very short. So uh, calling our our congressmen and emailing them. That's uh, constantly, excellent. Constantly, not just once and then let them go. Yeah, every day or or as as much as we can. I don't know how excellent. to get hold of White House, but White House is probably slowing down. That's probably the weak yeah. spot okay. because Congress is fine. So okay. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> looks like Lydia Sensei has returned to the Zoom. Uh, Lydia Sensei, how can we best help Ukraine? Yeah. I'm sorry, my computer had hung up. I had a call coming in and I had to close it. <laughs> you know. um, I just wanted to say that, you know, I've lived here for 30 years. And I've lived in the US, I've lived in Canada, and I've traveled to a lot of places on this planet, including Japan. This was bar none, the safest place I've ever lived in. As a person, as a woman, as anything, you name it, I could hitchhike in downtown cave at four in the morning and never even think about that anything could go wrong because it just was that kind of a place. And it still is, but we have a war going on. So right now, for me, the need is to make sure that as few as possible of our soldiers are killed because the more that are killed, the fewer we have to fight. So what they need is protective equipment, reconnaissance gear, and good medical care. Those are the three big things right now because we can't supply weapons. Our donations can't go to weapons. They're, they have to go to the kind of thing that'll be working on the ground. So protective gear, reconnaissance equipment, and good medical care. Nice. That's it. If we can get that going to people here, that's fabulous. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, so everyone, we're... Uh, further over time than I expected. We've taken more time than I expected. Um, I did have the uh, I did have the plan though that we would take a couple of questions from the chat. Um, ben and Chris, uh, have anybody have, have any people sent any questions via chat? If people would like, you can send a question via chat. Then I saw you unmute. It looked like you. Yeah, were I didn't. I didn't see any questions yet. So just no. Okay. All right. Um, we'll give it a couple more minutes to see if any questions come in. Uh, in the meantime, um, I really, really, in fact, I'm going to switch to gallery view for this, um, so I can see everybody's face and feel more authentic from me. Uh, I really, really appreciate everybody joining this meeting. Um, and I'm actually feeling a little bit emotional hearing these stories, uh, you know, even over Zoom here in my comfortable apartment in Los Angeles, you know, um, it was really moving for me, really touching. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank the panelists, of course. Uh, I also want to thank Craig. Is Craig still on? Uh, I want to th thank you, Craig. I see you now. I want to thank Craig for uh, all the introductions and helping out here and there, jumping onto emails and phone calls and things like that uh, to, to help us um, pull this together. And um, big, big thank you to Ben and Chris, um, my tech helpers. Um, and Chris in the past, I'm like making an assumption that you'll do it again, but Chris in the past has trimmed our videos down and uploaded them to YouTube and everything. So that's excellent. Um, so without Ben and Chris, uh, I would be really nervous trying to cover, cover everything that we do. Thank you so much to those of you who have donated. Um, I see that another, looks like another donation uh, just came in. Oh, maybe not. But um, thank you so much to those who have donated. Again, the last time I checked, it was uh, about 250 or 
Um, but that donation window will stay open. Um, and that one, uh, that one donation option, if you join my monthly membership course, I'll, I'll donate 100% of today's payment of that. That will stay open until midnight Pacific time. Um, I think the other donation button uh, will probably leave that open for maybe another 24 hours. So if you find that you are able to uh, click that again, or for your first time, uh, please don't hesitate. And um, if we don't have any other questions, Ben and Chris, any other questions? So one question coming. I think Lydia uh, might have a might want to say something. Okay. It's like you had a hand up. Sure, Lydia. I just can say. happened to see a question go by from Jamie Zimron, who runs the Aikido School for Women in San Francisco, who actually brought our original group to Ukraine in 1991. She's asking what the situation is with refugees, but it didn't catch the entire text. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. It says, what's the situation now with refugees internally and also leaving to Poland and other countries? Okay. Does one of our panelists, is one of our panelists able to answer that? I'm not really, maybe this I is can the, answer generally. I can answer in general. Okay. Um, probably about 6 million people actually left the country, but about a third of that have actually returned as well since. Um, the IDP situation was also like a huge swelling of people going to Western Ukraine, and then a very big movement back between May and the end of June. So for instance, where I live now, there's almost no IDPs. There are a few, but they're mostly from very far Eastern Ukraine. All the people from Kiev have pretty much gone back to Kiev. Um, in terms of refugees, I think the numbers are way, way down now because uh, those who wanted to flee have, have already long fled because war is now in its fifth month. So, okay. Good question, Jimmy. Thank you, Lydia Sensei. Oh, we've got time for one more question if somebody wants to send I a question. I saw one from Robert Kent uh, that I thought was really nice. Uh, Aikido has been a good therapy for combat related PTSD in the US. If Aikido teachers who knew how to uh, do this wanted to come to Ukraine after the war to help, who would they talk to to set that up? Um, so maybe if, if anybody has a uh, thought on that. Boy. Do any of the panelists, can you repeat the, the actual question at the end, Ben? Uh, yeah, the, the question is who, who, would, who would they talk to if they wanted to help out with teaching, using Aikido to help with PTSD in, um, in soldiers there? Yeah. Any panelists? Oh. Yes, Vasil. Oh, we have this uh, <clears throat> organization we, we donated money to. It's called uh, <clears throat> Revived Soldiers of Ukraine. What is By it called way, again? Revived Soldiers of Ukraine. Nice. So that is that is a group that's basically that I dealt with for years, but uh, and many soldiers, wounded soldiers, uh, and officers came from Ukraine to U.S. for different surgeries and medical help for rehabilitation. And later on, uh, they opened uh, a rehabilitation center in Ukraine. In fact, it was in Irpin. This is the place that was, where it was wiped out. This is where the genocide happened. Mm -hmm. That, that uh, uh, location survived. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, but predominantly they were dealing with uh, some uh, basically um, trying to regain sort of balance in terms of uh, anatomical, physiological meaning uh, in, in the rehabilitation of, of, uh, of uh, muscular uh, bone apparatus. So more or less that, about central, some sort of central uh, peripheral nervous system. But I say, uh, Kiyu is Kiyu, it's still a central part, but so, uh, we can, that's a good idea, by the way. I think we could probably think of, of a group where, where a dojo would be. Uh, Aikido is still a martial art. And I said, every warrior just uh, say you would need a rehabilitation. I can speak for myself. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Uh, like, I, I don't, I'm not sure how would I contain even that, that's a trigger yeah. to kill. 
Yeah. Uh, it's hard. So I guess I say, you know, and in that sense, it could be anywhere. It could be in Lviv, Kyiv, because that's the more populated areas. It could be somewhere in the mountains, like oh, wow. Lydia's place, like some, somewhere. And so yeah. it could be anywhere. I say a, a combination of those things, uh, where practically any dojo, like a seminar, yeah. uh, an extended, extended period of time, yeah. uh, where you need that personnel and place to do it. And that's it. And because the uh, Capetian Mountains is very, very beautiful. Oh, um, nice. But some people like cities. Uh -huh. So uh, Lviv, you know, lots of people crammed in one place, history, you know, architecture. Oh. The war will be over sooner or later again. Hopefully yeah. they will not destroy it. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, Kyiv is again, is beautiful. Yeah. I prefer okay. Kyiv. Kyiv is, uh, as a Western, I'm like almost a traitor. So I'm like a traitor. Yeah. <laughs> I had this conversation with Lydia Sensei. So how, you know, I said, I, I like Kyiv. And she's like, how could you like Kyiv more than Lviv? I said, I, I don't know. But uh, every person okay. is, is different. So I say any place where the dojo is, this is yes. a, a place of peace. And yes, it would help in rehabilitation. Uh, nice. People can can talk to me. It's fine if they want to talk. We can okay. eventually we can th think of something yeah. to for the, for that because I know we are losing about five soldiers a day in U.S. Uh, in peaceful time for okay. for like suicides. You know? yeah. That thing never ends. I have a few friends who are doing rehabilitation of U.S. soldiers in the U.S. Wow. So, so we started we started in, in Fort Knox and they continued signing contracts. So they they fought in Afghanistan, uh, Iraq for about eight years, nine years. Wow. Imagine wow. eight yeah. years of war. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and they come back mostly with with narcotics problems. Oof. Uh, they can they, they cannot back from military life back to civilian life. It's a problem. And then they cannot even imagine anything different than than a war. Right. So I say yes. Uh, can, and in fact, it could be not just in Ukraine. It could be anywhere. Exactly. So this is the first thing people need to just to get out and change the environment. Yes. So it could be anywhere. It could be in LA. Yes. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Good, good Thank idea. You. Thank you. Arigato gozaimashita. Arigato gozaimashita. All right. Thank you so much, Vasil. So, um, yeah, as I expected, um, this, uh, this Zoom meeting could shoot off into so many different directions for another hour. Uh, this is very rich. So revived soldiers of Ukraine. Um, <clears throat> let's do this, everybody. Um, an automated email already probably went out saying thanks for joining the event. Um, and then I'll send some, I'll, I'll be in touch with everybody. Uh, we will post the uh, link to the video replay for all of you, but anybody who missed this live uh, the live version of the event. Um, and then let's continue and see if there's, uh, see what shape a future event should take, whether it should be like this or maybe uh, something that Vasil uh, was mentioning. Um, Vasil, I'm sorry, you had one more thing to say. I yeah, want we'll to wrap actually, it up uh, soon. Uh, let's say, who was, out, who was present? Who is present in this meeting outside of Ukraine? But if, if you can uh, tell That's us. That's a is good idea. Cool? Let's, <clears throat> now I just switched it to gallery view. Those of you who have your cameras on, if you can raise your hand if you're outside of Ukraine, just for the record. Yeah, and some people have their cameras off, Vasil. I don't know if you can That's see. That's okay. But, uh, but yeah, here we are. And we've got a list of the participants, Vasil. I've got a list, so, <clears throat> um, Let's discuss, uh, maybe the thing for me to do is to make a, uh, some sort of Facebook group also, or who knows, uh, but let's continue after we turn off the Zoom as well. And we're not just gonna turn off the Zoom and then that's that, and then I'll send the donations and then that's that. No, let's, let's uh, figure out what's next, next steps, okay? And who's interested in next steps. All right. Thank you, thank you. So before we close, um, anything else important that I'm forgetting? I think I've got it all, yeah. And all the panelists had a chance to say what they want to say. Um, all right. Again, thank you so much to all of the panelists. Thank you so much to everybody who helped, the tech people and Craig also, Craig Sensei also. 
Um, so let's really spread the word. Um, and Please. be on the lookout for an email. Share this link to this video everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. Let's really spread the word and see if we can get even more people uh, moved and compelled to help. All right? All right. Thank you. Thank you. It feels so strange to turn off the Zoom. I, <laughs> it's, it's been very moving for me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Sensei. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.